Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Nanolathes at Dawn. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333 and this next match is going to be between Philthas and Lamadeus on Titan Duel. Considerably less stressful than the last one. So, starting out, Philthas going for Shieldbot Factory, while Lamadeus goes for the Light Vehicle Factory. And Lamadeus playing a couple darts right off the bat for a bit of scouting. Slightly aggressive. And Dirtbag coming up from Philthas as well. Philthas with that Dirtbag is, going, is really bringing me back a couple years or so into the meta. I mean, maybe a year or so. But yeah, dirtbags are a great scout unit. They just aren't often used for shieldbot players. Oftentimes you see a few bandits come out instead. But dirtbags are cheap. They scout out. You don't want to build too many of them unless you're Orphelius. But then Orphelius, and I think he won with that actually a couple times. Because just mass dirtbag. Not sure why I'm calling out Orphelius right now. That was pretty cool, actually. Like the mass dirtbag strategy stuff. That was kind of funny to watch. Anyway, the... Oh, you actually know why I'm calling him out. He was trolling me. Anyway, the point is that the bandits coming in from Philthos just use, use for defense. Dirtbag should be able to scout out some stuff. The dirt's coming in for Lamadeus. Able to get a bit of information first, though. So Lamadeus going for slashers as their defense. Basically mobile defender option. Not really going for heavy scorchers. So Lamadeus looks like they probably just want to crawl forward. Not going to worry too much about getting much territory without just slowly grabbing it. I guess they figured that Field Thoughts going for shields is going to be expanding slowly? I mean, probably not. It's shields, they're still bots, they're still moderately fast. I mean, Lamadeus should be able to expand a bit more rapidly. But using slashers might not be the way. I'm a bit surprised they are using slashers. I just, I don't know, normally you see Scorchers, even against the, even in this matchup. Once thugs get out, then yeah, you'll see a lot more levelers because you want to splash under the shields. But early on, no, Scorchers are quite good for this. And now, Failthaw is going for the Rogue as a counter to the Slashers, which I totally agree with. If you look at the stats for each, actually, Slasher has a range of 600 Elmos, while the Rogue has a range of 530, so it's a little bit less. True. But if the Slasher is moving at all, it can't fire. So you might as well just... I mean, you can go with the bandits to kind of force them to stop, and the rogues can take pot shots while the bandits are dodging the fire. Or taking a few hits. Anyway, at this point... Felthaw's pretty focused on those rogues. Getting a bit of expansion. The territory is kind of favoring Lamadeus right now. The Lamadeus slightly ahead. They have... Well, they have expansions opening up in a way into the center that I think is a little bit stronger than what Failthos is are opening up with. Though Failthos should be able to get this quickly enough. They do only have a couple convicts and their commander expanding. Lamadeus has their commander along with a couple of masons. Actually, it's about the same. And one of the masons is more focused on energy as Lamadeus is actually starting to run a bit low on power. Not to an extent that I would consider massively worrying, but this is not a bad time to set up solar plants. Like, they should be able to have enough energy to use their metal by the time they get this last couple solar plants done. And they should just avoid excess. So that's fairly well timed. Feldas, however, looks like they're trying to basically work around that. Sending in the rogues to quickly get rid of probably the lotus. Or just generally get rid of anything that comes forward. And that indeed is what's going to happen. The mason actually being very vulnerable. The slashes won't be able to get the kills in time. Like, slashes don't deal a huge amount of damage. They deal a fairly high damage per second, but individual shots don't deal much damage. That's not the same for Rogue, though. Rogue, <laughs> 350 damage compared to 40. So Rogue actually two-shot these. Unfortunately, there's only one Rogue. Zero Rogues. There's only zero Rogues. They're all dead. I mean, there's some in production, so... They're not... Oh, whoops. They're not all dead, but... One of them just died. Embarrassingly. However, Thug Rogue, given that there aren't very many levelers and quite a few... this one leveler. Quite a few slashers. Actually, there are a couple levelers. This might be a bit dangerous. I was thinking Thug Rogue would be a great idea. Just to have the shield so you can avoid the slasher fire while the rogues mess with slashers. It's not a bad idea. Problem is... That there isn't really much... There isn't really much I could say that is all that great. Like, I don't know. The slashers, because they go stationary when they fire, means they're sitting ducks for rogues. 
They're not going to avoid getting hit that easily. And they don't deal enough damage to really deal with the rogues effectively. Like the rogues can kind of dance in and out of the range. They take some damage, and against this this many slashers, it's not a good thing. But, you know, to put a thug or two, take the damage. Have the rogues behind actually dealing the damage. And Fealtas at the same time managing to get quite a bit of territory by taking the northeast. The southwest looks like it'll go to Lamadeus at this point. Fealtas not really focusing on that, but their commander is kind of nearby. They might push to it at some point. And this is exactly what I expect. The Thug shield blocking basically everything while the rogues are able to deal the damage they need to deal. And the Thug might be sacrificed in the process, actually moving forward to deal some damage itself. It's tried to slow down its own death a little bit. But it's doing its job. Like, the fact that it's taking the brunt of the fire and stopping everything else from getting in, that's really effective. That's very useful. It would help if the rogues didn't actually attack it, too, but, you know, you can't always be helped. They are rogues, after all. They are, however, occasionally extremely effective at getting rid of enemies. That was a nice little triple kill off two missiles. Still, Philthos is slightly ahead economically. And, you know, putting all that money into the production as well. They can easily get a bit of a higher production value on top of that. They're getting another caretaker as well, so this is great for Philthos. Lamadeus, on the other hand, they're able to get some reclaim at the very least. Like, it's something. You know, 128, probably 200 metal in total reclaim from the forces that were destroyed. But again, here's the thugs. Thug and rogue coming in here, and at this point, it looks like Fieldhouse has figured out how to coordinate these in a way that's actually really effective. The thugs go forward, and they you know they force the slashers to move, but when the slashers are moving, they aren't attacking. So Fieldhouse has really countered this nicely. I don't see Lamadeus building up in response to this, though. There's a few levelers coming in, which is not a bad response. And a few scorchers coming in, which is a really good response. But... Not much else, and the slashes are basically all dead. The raptors coming in are also a good response, but they aren't going for the rogues. And at this point, the sheer number of rogues coming in from Field of Us is kind of scary, actually. Like, I'm not sure how Field of Us is gonna be able to get beaten at this point. Which I know sounds kind of like I'm saying a lot here, but yeah, with the sheer number of rogues, they're dealing with the slashers no problem. The slashers don't have the numbers advantage to get rid of the rogues effectively. The thugs are taking most of the damage. And also dealing a fair amount themselves, so they're really breaking the northern side of Lamadeus' base. And if Lamadeus loses their commander, they don't have much in the north to expand or reclaim with. There's not much else here, though. There's no convicts here from Fieldthos to try to take out the reclaim fields. I mean, there's one up here, but it's nowhere nearby. 600 metal reclaim is still nice, though. But yeah, if Lamadeus loses their commander, that's... that's still a big blow. I don't know if they will, though. It does not seem to be Fieldhouse's focus. Fieldhouse appears to be focused more on getting rid of the defenses, breaking with the cannon of the line, and Lamadeus, at this point, managing to put themselves in a bit of a safer position. Bandits coming in behind everything else. I'm not sure I agree with that. I mean, it's good for the slashers. Okay for the ravagers, but the levelers will completely cream them. Still, the rogues should be able to take care of the levelers without too many issues, so that combination could still be very effective. And I should also point out, Philthos has taken, or at least is contesting, the Southwest. So at this point, Philthos, with a fairly solid economic lead, fairly solid production lead as well, they are using all of that metal. Lamadeus' only advantage right now is they do have more energy, so they can take advantage of more reclaim, which they are getting a lot of. They're going to be much better at dealing with this entire reclaim field. But, I mean, the convict's right there. The reclaim field is not being taken. Fieldhouse can still take that reclaim field. They can still have one convict taking the reclaim field and have no problem spending that money. So, I don't see that being necessarily all that effective. And, of course, here we are making a bigger reclaim field for this claiming. And, again, those thugs just taking all the damage. They're doing such a great job dying. Which sounds weird to say, but their deaths are extremely useful because they're taking the damage the rogues aren't, and the rogues are dealing all the damage to break these lines and force Lamadeus further and further back. Now, the south is possibly one point where Lamadeus could maybe start to break through. The defenders are a bit of a pain, but the problem is they can't split their forces that way. Like, they seem to be trying to take it with defenses instead, just build up a defense line and hope for the best, maybe take the southwest from there and possibly have a flanking route once they get counterattacks available. But at this point, even thinking about a counterattack is a little bit ridiculous. Philthos' army is getting quite large. Still, the north side getting possibly broken. The, the convict here will be going down in a sec. There it... Oh, one more shot should do it. 
mean, actually, it might be saved. Oh, wow, these, no, these rogues aren't going to come fast enough. The convict does go down. The rest of the base could be saved, though. The rogues will be able to stop the levelers from killing it if they hit. Which they might. They largely don't. That kind of sucks. At the same time, though, massive force over in Lamadeus' base, just right in the center. The thugs coming in here, once again, stopping a whole lot of damage from being dealt. I like the Scorcher idea, except the outlaws are already here to counter it. I'm a bit surprised we don't see... I guess Impalers would be one option. I don't know. Like, what would you use at this point? This is a tough thing to do. Ravagers aren't a bad idea. I think Ravagers are really the best way to go. Ravager Leveler. Just Mass Ravager Leveler. That's probably the most effective thing to do. It stays outside of the Outlaw range. It gets under the Thug Shields. It is fast enough, or at least the Ravagers are fast enough, that they can deal with some of this. Especially the Rogues. They can deal with the Rogues. Get rid of those things. Because Scorchers won't be able to deal with the Outlaws nearby. But as it is, I don't know if Lamadeus has much time to build that up, because they're about to lose the commander. They're about to lose most of this northern firebase. It's not the entire northern firebase. And that's basically the only bulwark they have against their main base being destroyed. And the commander down, so there's no way to rebuild that easily. The Ravagers are doing what they can to stay in some kind of defensive position. And that firebase is still alive. There is, however, still an opening through here. Like, right through here, there's an opening that could lead straight to the main base. Not a lot of stuff defending that. A lot of power plants. A lot of juicy power plants. Even though at this point, Lamadeus, with no storage, is... I mean, they still have extra power. They can still work with the stuff. The reclaim is still something they can work with. They're not losing any metal here. But they are losing a lot of units gradually. And failed us the very slight attrition advantage. But a constant metal advantage. Like, Failthos is massively ahead in pretty much every metric. But yeah, this is... This might be the last push. Lamadeus is going to lose that firebase to the north. Have it completely disarmed by racketeers. And the Ravagers coming in here. This is, like I said, this is the move I want to see. But I don't know if it's going to work. Especially given that this tiny corridor here. It means the Ravagers are not going to take advantage of their range or their speed. Losing both. And there's no levelers as well as support. There's a Ravager, Ravager leveler combo. And we see the Wolverines coming in here. But I suggested I didn't suggest Wolverines for the simple reason that the Claws are going to get wrecked by outlaws. And against the rogues is not a bad idea, but against the outlaws, it's complete suicide. I mean, some forces back here, I mean, this Ravager leveler combo, it is it is showing its worth. It is keeping Lamadeus alive. But Lamadeus just lost that big firebase. They lost pretty much all of their northern defenses. They have the western defenses here, but who cares about that? Philthos is just going to go over that completely. They're going to go north of that. And then go south from... Sorry, east of that, basically. They're going to just go past it. They're going to go up and around and down. And it's done. Or just flank the defensive line. That works, too. Either way, there's not much that Lamadeus has set up that Fieldhouse can't work around right now. So at this point, I just don't see this working out. Not for Lamadeus. Unless Lamadeus either has a really clever factory switch or just bunches up a bunch of units, waits until Field Thoughts gets close, then breaks them and goes for a counterattack. And that might be what Lamadeus is doing right now, actually. They are holding back with these levelers and ravagers somewhat. But they're mostly building masons and wolverines. And, like, I don't understand the wolverine play. I understand the wolverine play conceptually. It's just the outlaws stop the wolverine play dead in his tracks. So it's not that useful. It makes some sense because it's not a bad idea to get rid of skirmishers in general. Just the shieldbot matchup. The outlaw and the shieldbot matchup really warps a lot of what are typical strategies. Like using raiders against skirmishers, using artillery against skirmishers. Ravagers work as a decent way of getting around that. But those weren't used in great enough numbers. Except for a few times. And when they were used, they actually were doing a pretty good job. But there aren't enough of them. And Lamadeus decides that there won't ever be enough of them. And blows everything up instead. Yeah, if you look at the income, though, yeah, Philthos fairly ahead most of the time. Metal use, Philthos ahead most of the time. And unit value, actually, fairly even. Lamadeus was not letting Philthos get away with their economic advantage. Not easily, not until near the end. So overall, Lamadeus was actually doing pretty well. It's just that they were ultimately unable to keep up with the outlaws. Like, the... The way the units being built, Philthos's units did not really get countered. 
that was the thing. They just, they didn't get countered, and there wasn't enough money, and of course, by that point, Philotas had already taken most of the map anyway, so there wasn't much that Lamadeus could do. So Lamadeus didn't have much money, they didn't have much in the way of proper counters. It's kind of tough to figure out the proper counters for light vehicles anyway. Light vehicle is kind of a weird map, it doesn't have, or sorry, weird factory. It doesn't have a proper skirmisher, the closest it has is the, the, the slasher, which, of course, already is countered from the start. And it doesn't really have a great way of getting around outlaws. I mean, moder not moderators, the impalers are okay, but impalers are quite expensive. So I could see why you wouldn't use them. And like I said, ravagers are a pretty good idea. Ravagers are often a good idea. For the most things that Light Vehicle has to deal with, ravagers are often the way to go. But I think Lamadeus figured that the Ravagers wouldn't work because either the Rogues would get them, or they would get slowed down. And yeah, that's really a question of tactics. Like you kind of have to dance around with the Ravagers. The Outlaws getting too close will kill the Ravagers because they'll lose their speed advantage. Although they'll still maintain their health advantage, just not for long. And their fire rate's really slow to begin with, so it doesn't help having the Outlaws coming at them. So yeah, that was that. And the last map for a night is going to be another team game, a 3v3 between Lamades, Bradley, and Savitz Me against Shirka, Jummy, and 2 plus 2 is 5. Another request game that came in. I mean, I pointed out you can do requests, and then people gave requests, and now I have actually quite a few. I'll probably do some of them on a Tuesday or something. I'll just, I mean, Twitch will go live and there'll be a tweet about it. Usually it's Tuesday for if I'm doing additional 0k stuff. I did used to stream multiple times a week. I just stopped because I was trying to do it less to maintain some sense of sanity. And now I've got more free time, so I don't know. Anyway, that being said, last match for tonight is a 3v3 on Avalanche. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes.